Hello everyone, welcome to video lecture series of satellite communication. Today's topic is attitude and orbit control system. See, we have already discussed about the various satellite subsystems where attitude and orbit control is one integral subsystem. The other subsystems are telemetry tracking and command, communication subsystem, power supply. So here in this particular video, I will be discussing about the attitude and orbit control in detail. Let us begin. See, attitude and orbit control subsystem, it is capable of placing the satellite into the right orbit and it is also helpful to control the satellite orbit besides maintaining stabilization and maintaining the position of the satellite. In some of the cases, the control can be affected from the satellite itself and from the ground. This subsystem, like here we are talking about the attitude and orbit control, it consists of four major components. The components are sensors, orbit control system, propulsion system and attitude control system. So it consists of four these components and I will be discussing one by one. But before discussing these components in detail, you must understand why there is a shift in the satellite orbit. Is there any uh, like available force which is going to impact the satellite because of which there is a change in the attitude and the orbit of the satellite beyond the like required limit. See, I have already discussed about the various orbital perturbations and some of the examples let me give you that we have already discussed about the asymmetry of the earth's gravitational field. Earth is not a perfect sphere. There is some bulging, some flattening at the poles because of which certain forces may like impact the satellite orbit. Second factor, gravitational forces due to sun, moon and other planets like they these kinds of planets, they may set up rotational movements and if the satellite is not perfectly balanced, then it, its orbit is going to be impacted. There could be certain changes because of the pressure due to solar radiations or because of the magnetic field of the earth. So because these forces may impact, so you need to understand if there is any variation, then how it is going to be corrected. First, we are going to talk about the sensors. So, in for attitude control, when we are talking about how to control the orbit of the satellite, two types of sensors are commonly used. One is earth sensor and the other is sun sensor. See, always a pair of sensors are used over here. First, what is earth sensor? Earth sensor, it is nothing but a passive infrared device. It is a passive infrared device and it operates in 14 to 16 micrometer wavelength and what it does it actually senses the infrared which are coming from the around the horizon and there is a sharp temperature difference you know that the temperature of the earth sorry space and earth horizons that may be different because the space is cool and earth is warm. So a phase difference pulses are sent to the earth station and they used to be measured which is a term known as a earth aspect angle. Second type of sensor is the sun sensor. Sun sensor it has a fan shaped field of view. Fan shaped field of view and it operates in the visible spectrum and the, it actually uses a photocell for detecting the solar radiations. So there are two sensors actually, one is parallel to the spin axis and the other is centered at 35 degree and the pulses from the sun sensors which are sent to the earth station, they are used to determine solar aspect angle. It means in both the cases we are concerned about the aspect angle for first sensor that is the earth aspect angle and for the second one the sun solar aspect angle 
Second component is the orbit control system. So, in the case of the orbit control system, there is a requirement to continuously monitor the satellite orbit and a geostationary satellite is subjected to like feel various forces which may tend to change the satellite orbit. So, sensors are used over here and the different different sensors are being placed on the body of the satellite they use to send the data to the ground stations. Data like linear acceleration, changes in velocity. So, these many data are used to send to the ground station. So, when the ground station receives the information and if there is any change that is to be analyzed and appropriate command signals are generated and that will be sent to the satellite for the correction. So, in case if there is a change in the velocity, so that particular thing is to be analyzed and appropriate command signal which is used to correct the satellite velocity will be transmitted from the earth station and accordingly the necessary action will be taken out. And in the case of the satellite when we are talking about orbit then inclination angle which is represented by I, it plays a very important role. See to correct the change in the inclination angle, it is a very tedious task. See, this correction is required if there is a correction and which is to be done for the inclination angle, then it requires a huge amount of fuel. Like if a satellite is carrying a weight of 1000 kg and there is a requirement of correction of plus minus 0 0.1 degree then out of 1000 kg it needs 30 kg to correct this much of the inclination angle now you can see how much difficult how much costly it is third component is the propulsion system propulsion system it is actually a reaction control system Propulsion system is a reaction control system and this is carried by the satellite in the geostationary orbit so as to generate forces as and when required. So reaction control system if you have to understand that it is a supply of fuels nothing but so, it is a supply of fuels and it helps the satellite to move to the designated position if there is any variation. And usually a propulsion system consists of three units. First is low thrust actuators, second is high thrust motors and third is the with space shuttle launch vehicles. So, low thrust actuators, see these actuators are actually devoted for the attitude and orbit corrections for annually if there is a like if the satellite is moving into a designated orbit there may be change in the velocity so low thrust actuators provides annually 50 meter per second a velocity increment high thrust motors they provides the velocity increment whenever there is a requirement for the geostationary orbit injection from where at the transfer orbit apogee. We have already discussed about the mechanism of launching a satellite. And third is the with space shuttle. So with space shuttle means it provides the velocity increment which is required to inject the satellite into the transfer orbit. So this is what I have already discussed. right? And out of these three propulsion units, low thrust actuators, this first one, this is of very important for the geostationary satellites because it is the responsibility of the keeping of a satellite into a designated orbit within its perfect attitude till the life ends, right? Because it keeps providing an annual velocity increment of 50 meter per second. So, this is of very important and low thrust actuators, it can be either chemical ones or the mechanical ones depending upon the requirement. Now let us talk about the attitude control system. So the attitude control system of a spacecraft it is required so that the antenna which is pointed correctly at the earth. Gravitational forces may impact I have already told you 
so they are going to impact but there is a requirement to maintain the orbit and the attitude control it may be of two types passive control and active control a passive attitude control system if you have to understand it maintains the attitude by orbiting equilibrium at the desired orientation and there is no use of the active attitude devices second is the active attitude control so active control system it maintains the attitude by the use of active devices in the control loop so in second case there is a use of active devices in the control loop while in the first case it's not required like now when we are talking about the attitude control it means the height of the satellite orbit must be maintained so how it is to be maintained definitely you must be getting some real time data which is to be compared with the reference one and if there is any variation that needs to be corrected so the overall operation can be divided into four steps first is the detection of the satellite attitude second whatever the data we are getting from the sensor which is placed on the body of the satellite and which is giving you the information about the attitude that is to be compared with the reference and if there is any variation then first we need to calculate how much corrective torque is required and once we are able to calculate the corrective torque then correction of altitude is being done by the use of actuators which are mounted on the body of the satellite because and the correction may be required along any axis and if you talk about the spacecraft then the three axis about which the motions can be governed that can be understand as yaw roll and pitch right so these four operations four steps it has been shown by this particular diagram as well here you can see at the input we are having the reference data the attitude then there is a here you can see at this particular point point number 2 point number 1 we are having the reference one at point number 2 a comparison is being done see from the spacecraft the sensors are sending the information and the sensor information is being compared with the reference one which we are getting about the attitude in case there is any difference then control circuitry will helps us to identify to evaluate how much torque is required so this is step number 3 and then the correction with the helps of with the help of the actuators which is being mounted on the body of the satellite so in this particular manner the active attitude control operation can be performed now because we know that attitude control it takes care of the satellite orientation right it means the satellite has to be properly oriented and this particular orientation variation if there is any that is to be done with the help of the momentum wheels and thruster motors so there are two major methods one is the spin stabilization and second is the three axis body stabilization these are the methods for the stabilization of the satellite orbits so first let us talk about the spin stabilization in detail spin stabilization means here the entire body the spin means the whole spacecraft is rotated and because of the rotation a gyroscopic action is being maintained and because of which the correction in the direction can be done and it is the most commonly employed method right so here you can see and as i have told you that in this particular case the overall the entire spacecraft is rotated at 30 to 100 rotations per minute and because of this particular rotation gyroscopic action will be there and which is used to which is help to to maintain the satellite like correct direction this particular type of satellite see if you have to understand how it actually works so here this satellite consists of some cylindrical drums 
you can see in this particular diagrams which is covered by the solar cells and the rocket motors are available over here and here the antenna remains pointing towards the earth and the opposite motion the opposite motion is known as a d spin and the overall the spacecraft this is rotated at a high speed and accordingly the correction or the stabilization in the satellite orbit is being achieved right second is the three axis body stabilization which we'll be talking now three axis body stabilization this is a very interesting technique here a satellite is being rotated about the three axis you know that the three axis are what roll axis yaw and pitch roll it is considered in the direction in which the satellite moves yaw direction towards the earth and pitch it is the direction perpendicular to the orbital plane so here the satellite is being rotated or the entire spacecraft is rotated about these three axes and when the satellite is stabilized about all these three axes it is known as three axis body stabilization so here what happens this particular like process is being achieved by mounting three momentum wheels on three mutually perpendicular axis you can see over here one momentum wheel over here second is over here third is over here and what is a momentum wheel momentum wheel is nothing it is a high speed wheel and this wheel is actually driven by a motor and this wheel is sealed see how it, you can like understand it is kept in a sealed evacuated chamber and when you are increasing its speed it increases the angular momentum and change in the attitude is transmitted to the earth station by the telemetry data then it is to be compared and when like the overall body is being rotated about all these three axes then stabilization is being achieved this is a very important technique which is used in a number of cases Thank you so much for watching this video.